The essence of being a Lavivian, which I'm endeavouring to sketch in a rough outline, is an extraordinary mixture of nobility and roguery, wisdom and imbecility, poetry and vulgarity. The flavour of Lavuv and its culture is tart, reminding one of the taste of that unusual fruit that appears to ripen nowhere but in the Klepery suburb and which is called Chereka, the wild cherry. Not quite the Vizhnia or common cherry and not quite the Cherinya or sweet cherry, but the Chereka. Nostalgia even likes to falsify flavours too, telling us to taste nothing but the sweetness of Lvov today. But I know people for whom Lvov was a cup of gall. And, and the image he paints of this incredible city, it basically, when he was there, it had three communities. There were the Poles, there were the Jews, and there were the Ukrainians, who were called Ruthenians. And they lived in a sort of rough harmony. There was a, there was a hierarchy, not a happy hierarchy, I would say. Um, the Poles were sort of at the top. The Jews were caught in the middle. And the Ukrainians, were, the Ruthenians were at the bottom. They had very limited rights of access to the universities. Um, Jews, too, were excluded in large part. Um, and then, of course, the city changed hands in 39. It became, uh, it ceased to be Polish. Uh, it was uh, overtaken first uh, in 1939 uh, by uh, the Soviets. Uh, it was under Soviet control until the summer of 1941. It was then under German control from 41 to 44. And then the Soviet Red Army came back and it became part of an emergent independent uh, Ukraine, and then in '91 it truly became part of, uh, you know, capital, essentially the western part of the Ukraine. Uh, so it's a city that knows a mass of different communities, that knows conflict, that knows bloodshed, that knows decency, that knows nationalism. It is a really remarkable city, and I've sort of fallen in love with it. There are two other things about the city that I've come to love. My friends there my Ukrainian friends, who've helped me extraordinarily. It's a dark city with a dark past, and they have not shirked at all from exploring that, from opening doors that are difficult, and I've tremendously appreciated that. And the other thing is the food, which is magnificent. It probably has the best coffee in the world. No one knows this about Lviv. The reason for that, historically, is that first, uh, many, many centuries ago, the... Uh, I think the Italians passed through, the Venetians, uh, but more recently, the Austrians with their love of coffee. And so I drink some of the best coffee. Uh, I've probably eaten 27 varieties of borscht, lots of pickled cucumbers. I'm very partial to pickles. And uh, and I, I go a couple of times a year, and I, I just love being there. So that's the thing about Lviv. You eat very well. My favorite my favorite little restaurant is this little... I write about it in my essay. It's this amazing watering hole underneath the... Um, it's underneath the Bernardine Chapel. You'd never find it. It's a dungeon, basically. And they just make this fantastic lamb stew with apricots. It's fantastic. I mean, I can, I can smell it right now as I'm talking to you.